Okay, you guys with me right now? Okay, one thing I want to say before I get started, and this is for your own protection. Uh, I was watching a young lady being interviewed on television, and uh, she had accepted Jesus Christ and was uh, now born again. She said, um, uh, before she became born again, she was into witchcraft and uh, demonic worship. So um, she said uh, when she uh, first got a hold of the Harry Potter books and she began to read them, she realized that these were not just children's stories because they were using the actual names of demons in the book. And so she gave about six names that they use in the movie and in the book. And she said all of these names are also in the Satanic Bible. Well, um, a minister a while ago gave me a copy of the Demonic Bible. And I was like, I'm throwing this in the trash. And uh, the next morning, the Lord told me to read it. I'm like, nah, that ain't God talking to me. I ain't reading that book. So I was like, I'm going to throw it in the trash. And then the next day, the Lord said, I want you to read it. And I didn't understand God wanted me to read it so that I have understanding that from both sides that this is really true, that there is demonic influence. And so as I begin to read it, um, I don't know if you've ever played with Pokemon and all those things, a lot of the names of those characters are actual demons inside the book of Satan. And then, uh, when she gave these uh, six names, I'm not going to say them, but I looked in that same book, and all of these names that they use in the Harry Potter series, the, the names of the different wizards and stuff like that, are actually names of demons that are in the book of Satan. So, they're not playing with theirs, you know what I mean? And you look how popular Satan has made Harry Potter to people, and they don't know when they're saying these names, they're calling out the real names of real demons. Okay, so that's knowledge for you if you're standing in line for two hours to see the new Harry Potter. Praise God. Because the scripture says my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So you go to the movies and you can't sleep for three days. It's not my fault. I've told you. Praise God. Okay. Um, I asked the Lord what did he want me to talk about. And um, he gave me the Bible study, but he said to let the people know of this one thing. An event will happen in the world. And this is exactly what the Lord told me. An event will happen in the world. You who are not saved, um, you, it will sound to you like a blast. But those who are saved will hear my voice like a trumpet. Many will vanish from among men and the world will be changed. Violence, murder, and deception will follow. By this event, it says you will know, uh, by this event that will happen, it says, uh, you know it as the rapture, but I call it, the Lord says, the gathering. He says, when this happens, the world will know. Um, and that was it. He didn't say, know what, but they will know. Praise God. Go to Genesis real fast, uh, in Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11, verse 5. In Genesis chapter 11, Nimrod had convinced all these people after the flood to stay in uh, Babylon and... Uh, build this tower all the way up to God. And um, so uh, God saw that the people were building this tower. They were building an astrological tower to worship the moon and the suns and the stars. And then so God saw them doing this. And in verse 5 he says, But the Lord came down to see uh, the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord says, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan will uh, uh, to do will be impossible for them. Okay? So he says, come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So, uh, two very important things to understand here. As one, as they were working together, God said,
says if people work together as one, that means nothing, nothing will be able to stop them from doing what they're doing. So if you can get some people united for one cause, what they were doing wasn't even godly. And God said, but if they stay united, it'll get done. So how much more with godly people, if we stay united to get something done, it will get done. It will be impossible. But now from this scripture, everybody was speaking the same language, right? So who created all languages? Because now you separated 70 nations and we have so many different languages. So that means God created all languages. When he wrote the Bible, he used two specific languages as the root of how he would write his Bible. He used the Old Testament, he used the, the Hebrew. So if you want to know what a word actually means, what God is actually saying, you would have to uh, look it up in Hebrew if it's in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, he used Greek as the base language. And so if you want to understand something in the New Testament, you would have to look it up in Greek first, and that will tell you what the word actually means. Okay? So then, therefore, as you're reading the scriptures, you won't be confused because you can go to the original language, right? And you can find out exactly what God was saying. Like, you know, I speak ghetto, right? So when I say in ghetto, hey man, that dude over there tripping, right? So now you go, hey, I think the guy was falling down, right? So you look at it like, so what, what, what Sandy said with that, the guy was falling down. And then now you go to the original ghetto language, right? And his tripping means he's acting crazy, like he's on drugs or something, right? So then you go, oh, the real meaning is he was acting crazy. So see how the original language clarifies it? So you don't think the guy was falling down or taking a long trip, right? So that's how God clarifies his language. He has an original language. Now, when you talk about... Um, um, Three words, and we were talking about this on Wednesday night. Let's go to the book of uh, Romans real fast, if we can. The book of Romans. We want to talk about three words. Because in this book, in the book of, of Romans, um, I started studying... Um, and I think by the, look, the, the lead of the Holy Spirit, I started reading the word death or to die, okay? And I wanted to know, um, because see, Greek is a very precise language, okay? We only have a few words in English that are kind of like Greek. Like if we say, I whispered something to him, we know we talked softly, right? Or if we say, I shouted something to him, we know we spoke, but it was loud. Or I yelled at him, we know we spoke, but it was loud. Or if we say, I just spoke to him, we know it was in normal conversation, right? So our language distinguishes that one word. Well, in Greek, they do that for every word. There's like 12 words for every word. But they, they're specific to tell you exactly what he means. Okay? So as I'm studying, I realize that whenever God talks about somebody dying physically, it's necro. Okay, so when someone dies and it's a physical death, it's necro. But when, when God says, if you continue in your sins after you have known Christ, then you will die. Then that word he used is um, thanatos. And thanatos means you die when after there is eternal punishment. So there are two different, completely work, complete different words but they're both talking about death, but one is talking about physical, another one talking about an eternal death with uh, punishment and ruin. Then I read uh, the scripture that is um, uh, tattooed on my arm. I hate to say that, because somebody will say, you got a tattoo, you ain't no pastor. I did it before I was smart, okay? Um, but it's John 3.16. And John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. The word perish is pulamon, or polemen. And that means the same as thanatos, to die with eternal punishment and ruin afterwards. So God is very specific in the Greek when he's talking about um, this one word, death. But when we read it in English, we 
just read, you will die, you will die. So we might think he's talking about physical death, and God is really talking about a spiritual death that's going to last longer. Okay? So are you in Romans? 